Thank you and good morning everybody. It's my great pleasure to be here and I'm very honored to be speaking here in this audience this morning and, uh, and, and I would like to already thank the organizers, organizers for this uh, great event. I can really can feel their energy and, and, and enthusiasm around, around this event and the people who are here. Uh, I was asked to uh, tell about the influence of women, but before that I'd like to a little bit introduce myself and for those who don't know me. Um, currently, uh, well, I have been working for the health industry or all this health area for the last 25 years, covering from the position from the academic. I hold a PhD in biochemistry and biotechnology, but then I was quite soon after my uh, graduation, uh, we established a startup company in the pharmaceutical development, very challenging area, definitely. But uh, we are merges and acquisition. We end up to the IPO. It was listed on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange. Well, but then we came also down, and I, so I have seen the ups and downs in that industry as well. But the recent, uh, then I was also uh, working for the startups uh, in their accelerators, like the Technopolis Ventures in Kuopio. And later on now, last, uh, let me say, more than six years, I have been hired by the tech, uh, um, TECES, the Finnish Funding Agency for Innovation. So now I'm on the government side, uh, helping their researchers and companies to get funding and uh, to, to help the international growth of these companies. So my, uh, I have been heading their TECES health and well-being area for the last six years. But during the last recent one and a half years, I have actually being uh, on a leave of absence from my tickets position, and I wanted to jump for a certain period of time to the academics and to this interface of academia and corporates. So I have been a kind of a loan to the University of Turku and Turku campus to, to help, their, help to develop the processes and tools and services in this academic area to boost the academic innovations, uh, inventions, uh, uh, this commercialization of those findings there, not only in the University of Turku, but the whole campus area covering the four universities and university hospitals. And quite recently, we established a life science accelerator program there, and there is a put over there, who will uh, tell you more about these accelerator programs. And one part of my job has been also to build up the collaboration with the companies, not only, not only the pharma and health tech companies, but also companies like IBM, Microsoft, IT, that we have heard a lot of yesterday that how they are merging this, this area and what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, impact they may have. But that was shortly the thing, so uh, about myself. But uh, yeah, this is my... And we are talking about the influence of women and uh, women in health tech. Could anybody, or if I just ask that, just name a one person or two in the area of health, women who are influential, who can uh, just say one name, which could come up to your mind? Lena. Great, yes, wonderful. Lena is one of those influential women, definitely, in the VC side. So we have a lot of those actually. Uh, uh, good role models already, and, and those who were on the breakfast this morning, we had this kind of slideshow showing the fins there. But actually, I will start from the ancient Greeks. Is this wrong way? What's happened? Okay, yes. I don't know if anybody you know about Mentora. She was a Greek female uh, physician, and uh, she wrote a study on gynecology. Yeah, and she wrote a book of the disease of cures and women. That time, women, if they were any type, any way related to medicine or health, that was kind of midwifery thing. But she really wrote a book about how to cure women. And, and one of her greatest uh, 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 supervisors or, or uh, uh, advisors was himself Hippocrates. And her book was referred after many, many years when it was published in the medicine in Greek. But this lady is, I think, you, more familiar to you. It is Marie Curie, the Polish mathematician and scientist who actually invented with her husband polonium radium, those elements. And, and she got the Nobel Prize in physics and, in, and also in chemistry. And those findings that she did in the science has really changed and affected during the whole decades, like even today because those first uh, cures in cancer and, and treatments were based on radium, for instance. Well, they were 
of definitely a poisonous, but anyway, it cured the cancer. But then also the development of X-ray technology, which is f even, even today widely used in diagnostics. But one particular thing about Marie Curie was that she also showed the way how to combine uh, science, technology, and the private life. So re she really was uh, very joyful and, and, and raised up the awareness that women can both have, even that time, different roles in the society. But coming back this today, there are many ways to raise up the women and make the top 20, top 100 people, uh, influential women in the world. This is just a snapshot of the US Modern Healthcare Technology magazine that lists every year 25 the most influential women in the world. And I thought in that in that sense it means in US. But here are just a couple of examples of four examples of those, and especially the roles of the women. There is a Nancy Howell. She is the president of Carrion Clinic, huge clinic covering the clinic, medical school, uh, whatever, just name it. We have Deborah Dizanzer. We have IBM yesterday here, even today, I think. So she's heading their IBM Watch on Health globally, having 2,000 employees scaling up the Watch on Health. And I think this could be a kind of a good uh, uh, objective for us to get her next year here. So I just throw this poll to the organization so we could get her here next year. We have Judith Faulkner. She's the founder and CEO of Epic Systems, very familiar to fin in Finland. And, and she has been a long-term uh, CEO of the company, building up, uh, offering this um, uh, e-health record, uh, electronic health record system softwares and, and systems. So this is really a dominant company. And Emma Walmsley, she's, uh, she, will, she has been now been appointed in the beginning of April to be a CEO of Klaxo Smithline. Smithline. There, she's the first CEO of these big uh, global pharma companies in the world. So these are just examples of, of uh, from US. But if we want to understand a little bit better that uh, what kind, what is the situation, and, and we want to go a little bit back to the numbers, and and uh, uh, it's not very easy since the different countries, different companies, they record these things different in a different way. Even the government models are different. Uh, here is one uh, graphic about a uh, number of women, uh, actually board members, in the largest publicly listed companies. Because there you can get the numbers from the listed companies, it's, it's easier. But if you want to have all the companies, it's almost impossible. So here we can see, and this is in Europe, so these are the board members, of the, who, and, and the, uh, relatively to the men. So uh, Finland has been, it's been in the top of the list already for several years. And which is remarkable is that it is without the legislation, without the quotas. And this has been kind of a self-born system in Finland. And, and also Sweden has the same thing, that there is no legislation behind that that you should have. But if it's for instance like Norway, well it's not in the list because it's, uh, it's not in a EU country. But uh, two years ago in Norway they got a legislation that 40 percent, 40 percent of all the publicly listed, but also um, uh, government companies, you have, should have 40 percent, more than 40 percent of women in the ports. And Denmark is the least in Nordic countries. But anyway, Finland has been in pretty well in this respect. Uh, if we want to get a little bit broader of you to their women in, 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 the, in the corporates, we should look at their, the women CEOs. And now, again, from the listed companies, because otherwise it's a little bit difficult to get the right numbers. And here we can see that Finland is under the average in EU. Because in EU, the average is 5%, five percent it's, and in Finland we have just gone to the 4 Yeah. And uh, so there is a lot to do still in this respect. And well, what about then? Uh, of course, there are also other positions in the companies, not only the board members or CEOs. There are several women in different type of directors and director levels. But the outcome of the report of this women executive report 2016 was that anyway, those women which are there as, 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 as the directors, they end up to uh, supported functions. And supported functions means HR, um, maybe financing or uh, communication, 
And that is one reason behind those uh, previous uh, uh, tables and the sketches that why women don't raise up to the very high positions because they are in such a, such a operations which are kind of supporting operation and men dominate the business operations which are straightforward you are in the top lead of the company doing these things that will end up you into the into the CEO and, and port port members These statistics I showed are based on uh, this report that is done by the Finland Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, they actually publish every year a uh, kind of report. And, and uh, the behind this whole thing is that they want to support uh, both the sexes to be in the right positions in the companies, uh, in, the, in the corporates. So, and, and one of those... Uh, key issues in the program is because we can see that there is still some imbalance in that. So men, men, men dominate the, the positions in companies. So is to help to understand what is behind the phenomenon, what we could do. And, and to boost, and, and this kind of, they have this kind of, of women program, ongoing leadership program, where uh, the aim is to, to uh, 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 get the awareness of this phenomenon, but also to support and try to get women to the higher positions in companies. And uh, some of the recent uh, developments has been that the number of women, women, women directors has continued to grow. And last year it really reached a record level. That's great. Even uh, a number of CEOs in the listed companies has, has got a record number last year. It's not much, but anyway, I think it's a five or six person, but still there is some uh, some record uh, done. But uh, what is still uh, an area that we need to work on this is that at the percentage of women, executives has decreased after many years of steady growth. The report doesn't take a I give the answers of why it's that. It might be kind of a normal fluctuation in in these these numbers, but uh, still there is a lot to do. But do we have a role models in Finland? Uh, like mentioned, we have had some positive development. 2011, there were no women CEOs in publicly listed companies. And now, today, we have even six in small and medium-sized companies. We have to always think about also that what, what we're discussing about. The big corporate, really big publicly listed corporates, publicly listed small and medium-sized, or then just those very small companies. But none of them are in the health sector. We have uh, C uh, CEOs in listed companies like in Marimekko, Sanoma, uh, Technocrea, a couple of these others. And uh, I think everybody noticed that Hille was uh, appointed to be a president and CEO of Nokia Tires this, uh, this spring. And now we are talking about large, very big uh, listed company. But as we all remember, when this was published, it was also published that, well, she spent seven years at home with her children. So that was kind of a uh, thing that was definitely not mentioned if it was a man. So, but but uh, anyway, it was a positive, and I think this was a positive role model also, that you can combine both, like Marie Curie did. You have your, your work, your science, your things that you're doing, you are really enthusiastic, but then you can have a joyful life and that, and, and your role at home and the children. And I think Finland is one of those best places in the world where you can really combine these things. Yeah, that was the one. Uh, then some other findings from the, that report. You can get this Finland Chamber Commerce report from the internet. It's in English and Finnish. But some other findings, just wanted to raise it up, is that... Uh, uh, that maybe that may explain about those numbers and what we can really do for to exceed and, and to promote women in, in their businesses. Uh, business or engineering degree is, uh, has, has the most common education of the CEOs and, and at those level, top level their positions in the companies, and that's quite obvious. Uh, but what was also fine that women executives have an average and higher education level than men. Well, women tend to have a good education in Finland. And uh, most women executives in business management are in energy and healthcare. 37% of those positions 
uh, women in the in the healthcare. They they are, um, are the managers in uh, CEOs in healthcare and and highly directors executives. They are in the healthcare and, and, and energy region. And if we compare to industries like uh, construction, IT, whatever you can just name it, it's only three. So healthcare, energy are the area where women have been are able to get these higher positions in companies. There is good development happening since, based on the last year, 35% of the new director's appointments are women. So, gradually, we are getting the places uh, in the company's executive level and director level. And every third young executive is already a woman. But to be able to see even the wider perspective for this same phenomenon, we she should also uh, look this entrepreneurship. And I think that is also their, their issue of today, entrepreneurs and startups. Currently, uh, one third of the entrepreneurs in Finland in general are women. But what is remarkable is that they are very seldom in the growth business. They are more in the social and healthcare services, maybe restaurants, uh, education things, and uh, but even there is a positive development. It has been a, a, a recorded that 40 percent of the new entrepreneurs are already women. But still, every tenth of the startup uh, entrepreneur is woman, and that can be the, the number can be even lower if we are, uh, record the the tech startup funding applications, which is has been recently about 6%. So there we have a lot to do, how we can really uh, uh, boost and, and, and influence so that the women will start to also create startup companies. There are some reasons behind, it's that's just certain that I wanted to raise up, there are plenty of others I think, but it's also that most of the startups, as we know, they are established around technical solutions, like our softwares. And when we compare to the statistics of those who start, study the technical areas, it's about only one fourth of the students in, technical, uh, in the technical schools are women. If we compare to other areas like humanities or medical, even medicine, there are more than 50 uh, women. And like mentioned earlier, most of the women end up to the service business in healthcare, social care, education, or tourism type of things, and they are not the kind of a haven't been kind of a growth areas previously. Definitely healthcare is now, but but uh, not in the previous. And in Finland, we have a very large public sector. We have the public healthcare system, and this attracts women a lot. It is nice and steady career. Is it easier to be there than jumping to their very insecure uh, business and startup uh, world? So that might be also something behind those figures. But what is behind everything here? Is it, do we, do we really, do we, uh, is it about the sex? Is it about the men and women? Are we so different? Or is it an attitude or, or mindset here? Is it a mindset of the women or is it a mindset of men? Or does it not do nothing of, with this kind of a men and women thing? Or is it about the culture? And this was a little bit shocking picture some, some times ago in the news. And, uh, and definitely wouldn't be a populist in Finland. But, <laughs> but, uh, but this raised up a nice discussion around this is issue, actually. I, personally, I, I have been in this business in the academic and, 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 and all, all the level of corporates and then in the government. I haven't faced this kind of a discrimination or, or attitude against women. Actually, are I, the, most, the best mentors and supporters I have had previously in my, my career has been men, my bosses, my supervisors, my colleagues. And uh, I think this is also something that we should remember today here, and even if maybe we can discuss it in the panel, so that we don't isolate as a women here. We have a lot of support around with the men. We have men in the audience, so it's all about her. Uh, connecting and, and networking and and uh, I think the, uh, the what we are discussing today is a lot about the knowledge exchange, knowledge transfer and this kind of high mind, high mind things. But uh, we have been talking a lot about women's role in the business, and corporates, entrepreneurs, 
But women can have uh, several roles that we can influence in the ecosystem. And, 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 and it's not only the being in the business. We have, even in this morning breakfast, uh, this uh, slideshow, we have plenty of influence of women who are working for the government in different positions. We have public healthcare system. We have a lot of people, influence of women there. And also in science. So it's all around going around in this ecosystem and network and, and linking and, and sharing knowledge and finding the right people and, and also to peer, uh, peer open of uh, new ideas and, and exchange of, uh, of information. I wanted to raise up one person from, from Turku. She's a, she's a very good role model to be a very uh, academic and highly uh, uh, credit in that area. Sirpa Jalkanen, she, she has got the most uh, highest academian uh, honor that could be in Finland. She's academia and of science. But she has established, been the founder of two uh, bio and pharmaceutical companies, which are now listed in the New York and London Stock Exchange. And she got the EU prize for women innovation content. But like we know, we have plenty of good role models also uh, in the companies. Hannah has been on the stage yesterday. I don't know whether she's here today. And she has really taken a role as a kind of leader in the, in the IT and health Microsoft. Nelly, we know Nelly. She jumped to the cold water and went to Silicon Valley many years ago. And after that, she has established a couple of companies, three companies actually, Syria Entrepreneur. And yesterday, we had a launch of quality. Carita and Maria has a new concept, very new concept of uh, uh, supporting uh, cancer patients in their normal life and daily life. So we have a lot of things here ongoing. And finally, some of the suggestions. These are also from the report in this Chamber of Commerce report. What could be then done? I don't not, I'm not going into the details, but I just want to highlight um, some of things here. Like, uh, uh, I think that one of those important things is that you should take the opportunity and go beyond your comfort zone. Women are not very, often very, uh, uh, they are not, don't have encouraged to go beyond their expertise and be uh, curious of new things. Also, making this kind of a balance and uh, between your private life and working life, and to be mercy to yourself and uh, also to find a good mentor. We are not, uh, we don't know, we, we can't say that we are complete. We are, we are not the persons who, are, who should be just relying on our own expertise, but how we can find and share this knowledge and uh, build up the networks, not only between the, of course, between the women, but also the men and, and all the sectors, and also beyond your current business sector. And, uh, this is just an example, one book that um, may be of your interest, if you're interested in all this. It's kind of this knowledge illusion. So we think about, about that we think we know all the things and we don't know what the other knows, but how we can really interact and get all the knowledge which is around us to be utilized and to share it. Uh, because we don't yet have this Elon Musk neural lace so that we can be connected to the computer and share the, our knowledge. So we should be able to use these conventional methods to, to build up their ecosystem and, and network around us. So I'd like to thank you. And for my sla last slide is that as a Finnish 100 uh, year uh, anniversary, there is also uh, the same aspect has been raised up there that what, how we could really boost the women, influence of women in the Finnish society. And uh, uh, there are plenty of programs ongoing, the same, same issue and, and topic, and just kind of a free translation of the Jenny Justina Niemi, is that the women leaders, what they have in common is that they have a, a courage to work according to their values, and they are open for new things, and they have a ability to a capability to to challenge themselves. So this is something I think just for the remember you. And uh, I will stop here and wish you a great conference and uh, good discussion now on the panel. Thank you.